Hi everyone, my name is Sharon. I'm the designer behind River Road Knits, and this is the teaser trailer for my new pattern, the Boarding Pass Tee. In this video, we'll talk about construction, we'll talk about modifications, we'll talk about yardage and yarn choice, and how to make this sweater fit perfectly for you. This sweater is constructed top down and almost seamless. This is a saddle shoulder sweater, and I'll show you what that means. On either shoulder, you can see these colorwork stripes that go all the way from the neckline to the end of the sleeve, and that's called the saddle. So those are actually the first things that we make are these strips that are worked back and forth. And then once they're completed, then separately you'll pick up on the front and the back edges of each one to form the front and the back panels of the garment. So each of those are worked um, flat until you get to the underarm. The back has some short row shaping at the shoulders. The front has some shaping at the neckline to give it a nice scoop. And then once you get to the underarm, you will seam the sleeve stitches together at the bottom and then join to work the rest of the body in the round. And then when we get to the color work chart, we work the chart. And then this bottom hem is actually a folded hem. So you'll work down, you'll go to this purl row, which forms the fold, and then you'll come back up. And there's two different ways from how, for how to uh, join that last row on the inside. So I've given you two options, and they're a little bit different depending on what seems easier to you. Let's talk real quick about some techniques that you'll encounter in the pattern. Number one is when you do the saddle shoulders, you'll be working color work flat. It's a little bit tricky to do, and it's a little bit fiddly, but I have recorded a video to hopefully give you some tips on how to make that a little bit of an easier process. So working color flat for the saddle shoulders. Another technique is the short rows in the back I've written with Japanese short rows, and those are detailed line by line, exactly what you do. I really like that method of short rows. I think it looks really nice and really seamless. Another technique is doing the kitchener stitch at the underarms. You can also swap this out for a three needle bind off if you really want to. Um, I like the kitchener because it gives a nice seamless look at the underarms and then at the, at the join where it joins the body. But you can swap that out if it's a little bit too fussy for you. Another technique is the applied eye cord that goes around the neck and the sleeves. And I, again, have a tutorial for that that you can follow. And the folded hem at the bottom of the garment that, again, I have two different methods that are slightly different and you might find one is easier than the other for you. So I have two methods provided and I've provided de detailed instructions for how to do those. And then of course, following a color work chart for the body of the garment. For this pattern, I have 10 different sizes ranging from 32 and a half to 73 and three quarter inches finish bust. That's the finished bust measurement. And I have included four to 10 inches of ease. So you take your true bust measurement, you add four to 10 inches, and then that's the size that you'll make. I've written this as a sort of boxy top, but the sleeves are more on the fitted side, so you get a nice boxy, loose, um, flowy garment, but it still looks like it fits you properly because the sleeves are more fitted. Since we're talking about sizing, let's transition real quick into modifications that you can make when you're making your this garment. And number one, one of the changes you can make is to play with the different yarn colors. Um, here I've written it for three different colors of yarn, but you could do a two color and eliminate this um, second contrast color that shows up in this bottom chart. Um, you could also swap out, you could use that second contrast color up here at the shoulders and at the um, applied eye cord. So you can play around with the colors if you'd like to do that. As far as changing the shape of the garment, this one, this sweater is not really suited to a lot of modifications because it's boxy. It doesn't have any shaping for you to play around with. So the two modifications that I've outlined in the pattern is basically to change the circumference of the arms and then also to change the length of the garment. So to change the, the circumference of the arms, if you wanted to make them more or less fitted, you would just um, continue longer before you join them at the underarm. So that's a very easy change to make. And then as far as changing the length of the actual body, this is written as a little bit of a cropped garment. It'll hit right kind of at your hips as written, um, but you can obviously change the length of that. And that's just about changing the length before you start the color work chart. 
And also in the pattern, I have a way of checking your gauge before you get to the color work chart so you can know how long your garment will be when you finish. So you know exactly how long you need to knit in this portion before you start the chart. I do want to mention one tip that I would have based on the testers that I had working on the test knitting portion of this project. Um, we were finding that the gauge, your gauge could change pretty drastically in this course of this project because number one, you're working flat up here, you're working in the round here, and then you're working color work down here. So in all those places, you have opportunity for your gauge to change and that's a natural part of knitting. So I have suggested if you think if you think or you know that your gauge will change based on those things, I've suggested that you gauge, do a gauge swatch for each of those ways of knitting. Number one, um, knitting flat. Number two, knitting in the round. Number three, knitting in the round with color work. Um, so you may need to change needle sizes to keep your gauge consistent. And that's gonna help the sweater to have the right dimensions at the neck and in the bust, and then also so it won't draw in at the color work chart. So that's my suggestion for you to help you come up with a garment that you are happy with that fits as you expected. Finally, let's talk about yarn and yarn choice. So my sample was made um, in yarn from Hazel Knits. It is the blueprint base and it's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon fingering weight base. So I really like how this knit up. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a light fingering, um, which really lends itself to this pattern because the gauge, even though it's a summer sweater, the gauge has to be rather dense to be able to fit this chart in. Um, so it's the gauge is specified at 26 stitches for four inches. So if you have a light fingering weight yarn, that's gonna help give you the gauge that you need without being too dense. So I really like, the uh, blueprint base from Hazel Knits. Her colors are beautiful. The green that I used is Sedge. The wine color is called Isla. And this pink in here is called Satin Slip. All of these colors are so beautiful. She has a whole range of these gorgeous um, tonal solids that I think are just so great. So you can check out Hazel Knits. Um, again, the blueprint base is what I used. Like I said, using a light fingering weight yarn is going to help give you the airiness of this garment while still meeting the gauge. I used a traditional sock base that had merino and nylon. Um, I think it, it will help hold up very nicely. Um, it will keep its shape. Um, but this is also an opportunity where you can start using, you can use some of your drapier yarns, some that maybe have some silk content or something, um, and that will help also keep your garment very light and appropriate for warmer weather. For my sample, I used three tonal skeins that had a large amount of contrast between the colors, and that yielded a very striking color work chart. You can very, very clearly see the lines and the details in it. So obviously a tonal or slightly variegated yarn is going to get you that effect, but you can obviously use your speckled yarn or even a gradient in this bottom chart that will look really great. I'm gonna update the description box below with exact yardage once I collect all of the feedback from my testers, but as a general guideline, the sizes you'll use two to four skeins of the main color You'll use one to two skeins of the uh, contrast color one, which is this wine color that I have in here. And then all the sizes will use one skein of the contrast color, the second contrast color in here. So you can keep that in mind as you're looking for yarn. And of course, based on the yardage of the uh, skeins that you purchase, you may need to adjust these numbers. But as I said, I'm gonna put exact yardage in the description box below. So there we go. That is the teaser trailer for the Boarding Pass tee. I'm going to update the description box on the Pattern Goes Live with all the links where you can find it. You can find it on Ravelry, on Etsy, on Lovecrafts. I'm also going to link Hazel Knits store where I purchased this yarn so you can check out her colors as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you later. Bye.